uh, the roof system. A couple, a couple more things that probably need to be said. All right, uh, I got my ends, my gables on. Uh, the next thing I usually aim for, a center one, because it's 12 foot, especially. I, I aim for a center anywhere, especially with long spans. Eight foot's not that bad, but if the plates are bowed and they're bowed out, uh, it's just gonna make it harder to put together because the other rafters are kind of like in the way and shit, they'll get kind of jammed up. I go for a centered lineup on just about anything, except an eight foot shed. 12 foot, I always go for that center because it's got one in the center. And 12 foot longer, it, at least one in the center somewhere. Maybe two, you know. 16, I'll go with a, a couple of them. But, uh, you know that right there? Two. All right, we don't have marks for these. You can't, we're trying to nail them from the, I nail them from the inside underneath, actually. Just pull your tape off the end of this stud right here. I mean, this, uh, off our plate, off our plate right here. Just pull over, make, run your tape up high, mark, uh, Four, six, and eight, that's all. That's simple. Center your rafter up on it. We're pretty much centered there. And nail the back, bed the back in. Uh, you can toenail it, you can nail it from underneath also. Whatever way you can get nailed in, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I always, always nail through this sheeting right here into my rafters on every uh everything that doesn't have an overhang I, I do that on the front and back because trying to line them up will we'll rip the nails apart uh, uh actually more trying to line the sheeting up if it's bowed either way it, it'll uh take it'll pull the sheet it'll pull the sheeting off the ends of the rafters and it's just always better to put a, a nail in there for me uh that way i can get in there with a flat bar and actually freaking uh, work my flat bar, you know, pull, you know, turn it sideways, you know, get it wet, start wedging it, and uh, line my sheets up. My sheets, the sheets straighten the freaking wall. You, you, that has to be understood. Those sheets straighten this wall. The sheets on the that side and that side force these walls straight. If you don't force your sheet straight, your walls aren't straight. Let's see how it's looking out here. Got a little gap there. That's a big one. But we're about to fix this. No big deal. Uh, if I have to, I'll get a ladder up here. I'll hold on to this bitch right here. I'll put my knee or my foot against that header and I'll push it and I'll get two nails from underneath of it. And a couple toenails probably. And then one rafter will actually hold that. It'll, it'll center that and hold it. So, yeah, I just had to say that. Uh, definitely see my, my shed wall leaning some. That's really not a big deal until I start, start framing everything. Uh -oh. It looks like the front one's out to the right of here. No big deal. Uh, look at the bottom of my plates. The gaps on them. I still don't have uh, blocks on the centers because I want these things, these corners to stack up nice and tight before I get the sheeting on. They definitely stack up nice and tight when you don't have anything holding this whole freaking shed up except those corners. So they always, they'll always stack up tight like this if you leave all the center blocks out. If it starts dipping too much, just throw some freaking crap in anything. It doesn't matter. Just so it won't dip down too, too, too much. If it, if that got much worse, I'd throw something under there. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what. So it's only temporary anyway. Uh, when after these walls are done, as we frame that wall and uh, we sheet it and we nail it off, same thing with this wall. After that's done, uh, where, where the hell was I? Ooh. Yeah, after that's done, actually after the whole shed is really built, that's when I'll really be concerned about these wall, uh, these blocks under here. And the easiest way to do it really is uh, level your shed out with all four corners and go ahead and get yourself a, uh, some, kind of, uh, some kind of a level spot all the way, all the way around the perimeter. And uh, you know, you might have bows in your wood up and down. But when I do joist, uh, whichever one's had the most crown, they always get to the center of the shed. I aim for straight ones right there because that'll mess my measurements up. That bow, this is, this, you know, this is designed square, it's not designed with a bow. So if that bows up or down, that changes the overall height of whatever studs nailed to it. We aim for flat right there. If necessary, I mean, I've had to do it, cut the studs down a little bit so you hit your marks. And usually on something like this, on the gables, you don't need to anyway. You can just slide them over, left and right. It doesn't matter. I use my marks as uh, reference points. 
if I'm off my mark a half inch at the top, do it at the bottom, whatever they, it doesn't matter if it's half a quarter or one inch, one, you know, one inch might be getting a little bit far for uh, nailing. As long as your freaking nail patterns on the outside will hit that stud, you're good. Just keep them vertical by going off marks. Just equal amounts at the top and bottom. It, it's really not difficult. No one will ever notice. Especially if they're consistent from that side to that side. And they really don't know. But, uh, yeah, I'm about to finish uh, framing this roof up. I might get out of here. It's freaking it's nasty out here. It's not that cold, though, for uh, December 7th. I'm out here in short sleeves. I got a beanie on. But, uh, yeah, I'm about to finish framing this roof up. And I want to just show how I pull the measurements right there, right off the end. I'm right handed. It's easier for me to pull from the right and hold my tape in the left and mark with my right hand. Blah, blah, blah. All right, uh, that's it for right now.